Hello guys. <laughs> what the fuck? Hello guys and welcome to the first video of a little mini series about map creation. And in today's first video, I'm just going to show you how you first of all get your own map, how you um yeah, generate the basic map. And then I'll show you a little bit of an introduction into the world editor and the layout, how it works, and then in the next episode we'll start to work on the map actually. Alright, first of all, you're just going to spawn into any map and we're going to hit F11 to open the world editor. This is the scan standard um, keybind, so if you haven't changed it, yeah, it should be F11. And in here, we have our main interface to editing a map. You can see quite a few things here on the left. A lot of folders. You're going to see um, yeah, the structure of that later. But the only thing you're going to do here is just go to File, New Level, because they're called levels, not maps, internally. And I also refer to them now as map uh, levels and not maps. So let's create a new folder for a map. Just going to call it tutorial because I'm not the most creative person ever. Whatever. Just click open. And you're going to load into your new map. This is it. And my game froze. Which actually happened. And yeah, the last take, the game also crashed. I don't know why that happens, but that shouldn't be too much of a concern. Just restart the game, um, and then we'll go, yeah, go go to our map. And uh, you might wonder, be wondering why we can't see the map here in the map selection, and that's because we need to turn on include auxiliary debug content. Because for now, our map is labeled as yeah as that, so you know we're going to change that. Um, actually, we can change it right now um, to head into the directory of uh, your level. Press Windows R and type in percent app data percent. Hit OK. Oh, maybe a little bit too hard. My key got fell out. Then you go to go. One folder up to and change to local, then BMG drive, and then just latest, and then levels, and there you see all the files for your level. And right now, we're just going to go into the info.json file, open it up in whatever editor you want. You can even just use the basic yeah, Windows editor program, doesn't really matter. But I suggest using Notepad. But you don't have to. And in here we can change is auxiliary to false. And now our map will show up regularly. And we also can change new things about this author. It's me now. And then we can change title description, biome row, suitable for it. This is just everything that will show up when you select the level right here on the right. And yeah, you saw you, we were able to select it without the uh, include auxiliary debug cut it on. There it is, and yeah. These refer to um, the translations, so the original content doesn't, um, original levels don't just put a title in here, they have like a link of sorts to the translation so um, these descriptions and titles can be different in other languages but for us we'll just read those and type in our own description you don't even have to give it a description and it will just not show up all right save that control s obviously and now we are on our map this is two by two uh, kilometers or well not not exactly 2000 
48 by 2048 meters for roughly um, four square kilometers, a little bit more obviously then. So first things first, we're just going to open up the world editor again and I'm going to explain the overlay you can see here, the UI a little bit. First of all, we have the scene tree on the left here, which includes anything that is in your level. And right here we have the terrain called the terrain. Right there, that's the terrain. Then we have different things like the water, in this case there's an ocean, all already organized in yeah, a simple folder structure. Some of these are still empty. Then we have the player drop points for the spawn points. Just the synonym for that. So on the left, you can see a folder structure of whatever is in your level. Then on the right, corresponding to what we select in, in our level, you'll see an inspector which just shows different properties and values for whatever we selected. In this case, we selected the terrain. As you can see, there are different values for name, position, rotation, where it gets its terrain file from, and other settings. And these settings obviously differ on what you select. And we have this toolbar at the top here. Well, first we can use a different mode. Well, now we are an object select. We could just go around selecting things. Then we can choose how to manipulate that object in, yeah, mostly or only th it's in 3D space. So we could translate or move it. You can rotate it. Uh, let me see. Yeah, rotate it. And we can we can scale it up or down which for the terrain doesn't work you can scale the terrain um is there anything else in here i could i could actually scale i don't think so and then we have we can change from local from world to local coordinates which I uh, would change whether you're moving the object in relative to its own orientation or the world's orientation. The world's orientation is always the same. This is this what you see down here is the world space. It will always be the same, and all those axes are always in the same um, direction. If we now rotate this like this and we go back to um, the move or translate you can see it's still the same but if we now switch to local coordinates you can see that those coordinates have aligned with how we rotated it so just so you know that's the difference between local and world coordinates that you can snap whatever you're moving to the grid and i think this just be yeah, in well, yeah, exactly one meter since we put in one right there. And yeah, by the way, all measurements are metric. And then we have different things. We can create other objects. We can have a camera path editor, which you use to make cinematic things, which might also come up in this series. That we have decal editors, forest tools, mesh particles, rivers. Decal roads, script AI, terrain tools, all different things that you can use um, to change your level. And then on the far left of this toolbar, we have we can create new level, we can open a level, we can save a level, which I'm going to do right now. By the way, the hotkey, I mean, you probably know it's just Control S. Simple as that. I mean, you can see all of the shortcuts right next to options and then yeah undo redo cut copy paste and we also can have some editor preferences 
We can change actually a bunch of stuff. Um, but not to bother with that one on the very first episode. And I also showed you um, these options here. You can for the fire, you can uh, change level to so make a new level, open level, save the level, export something. Um, as collateral, which is a specific um, file for 3D objects, and you can close the editor again. Here you have the basic edit commands, and one thing that you'll probably use the most is on the window, where you can open different windows. For example, we can select Asset Browser, and you can see a new window has opened on the side here where we can browse through the assets that we have first of all in our in our in the files for our own level and then uh, generally there is another art folder generally in the game where you can get other things from whatever you're looking for you can also obviously search since it's called windows i mean you can move them around put them wherever you want to and yeah design your world editor as you wish but i just keep those on the right here and you can just close the window obviously by pressing the x on the top right corner or righty uh, there also a lot of other things in here that uh, we also explore in other episodes but for now that should be it for the very first episode. I know we haven't done much yet. We've just created the new level. And in the next episode, I will just show you a little bit about the terrain tools and yeah, different terrain materials, shaping the terrain in the way you want, and also creating a terrain with ex external software and then importing it into BeamNG. Um, yeah, it's just like basically a terrain generation program and we'll import that into BMG. So yeah, like the video if you liked it, dislike if you didn't, subscribe to not miss the future episodes and comment on what you would like me to yeah put a special focus on or anything that you want to see in the series and I see you guys again in the next video.